Well, welcome in, everybody. Thank you for joining this demo of my new game. For those of you who don't know me, I'm JD. Uh, well, that's my old title. I need to change that. I'm now just a senior software engineer, starting a new job on Monday. I'm in the thank you. I'm in the Drupal community working group conflict resolution team, which is hard to say really fast. I've been doing Drupal for over 10 years now. Before that, I was a paramedic. I've been doing coding since the 80s. And you can find me on Twitch at JD Does Dev. So what are we talking about today? Well, talking about me, talking about myself, talking to myself. And by that, I mean live streaming. Live streaming development, live streaming uh, learning, learning in public however you want to put it. Uh, it's something that I do quite regularly and it's helped me out a lot. Now when I say live streaming I don't mean hey watch me play this game and do loud reactions all the time or me in a hot tub and you're welcome for that. I, I mean doing development while streaming and learning in public. Well, <clears throat> what do I mean by development streaming? Well, it's live streaming on Twitch, YouTube, or other services uh, while doing, learning, teaching, or talking about development. In fact, there is now, within the last few years, a, uh, a category on Twitch for software and game development. Before, you kind of had to go between either business or art or um, science and technology, and it got really muddied. So we have our own category now. But why? Why do people do this? Why do people watch? And I did research, and by research I mean I came up with a list of why I do it and then asked others why, why they do it. So here are my main reasons. Stop right there. Helps with real-time problem solving. It really helps with community building. One of my favorite things, sharing knowledge makes me accountable, makes me more productive, which I'm surprised to. A lot of networking, I've lot of, met a lot of great people, and instant feedback and problem solving and good old fashioned narcissism. Now why people watch? According to a very informal poll, and I asked oh, other streamers, other people in other streams, uh, why people watch, and here are some of the, the, the common reason. Body doubling. Um, do anybody not know what that is? It's kind of like being in the presence of somebody else who's working helps people work. So even if it's just somebody to ignore, helps people you know, get motivated to do something. Um, they, they do it to support people that they know and like or to hang out with them. Uh, sharing knowledge, which is, you know, goes along with the helping people out. And uh, getting help themselves. A lot of people go in to ask questions. A lot of people will just say, hey, teach me this. Uh, uh, and you know, it's great that way. And networking. Now let's talk about me talking about what I'm doing to nobody but me. Well, talking through problems made me better and what I mean by that is talking through what I was doing it made me slow down and actually understand the problem instead of just you know oh, I'm gonna do this in, in my head you know talking through whether it's you know to myself or if anybody's actually watching me on stream talking and explaining okay this is what I'm going to try to accomplish here's what I'm thinking about doing and then talking through the way that I'm going to do it Sometimes there will be people there who have done the exact same thing, and they're like, no, 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 this is, going to be, this is going to help you out a lot if you do it this way. Sometimes people will be like, hey, I've been wondering how to do this too. Great, show me how. But it, it gives me an opportunity to slow down. And it helps because it makes me clarify the problem. Instead of just going with a random or whatever is popping into my head, Clarifying the problem. It's just, just like writing it down. Uh, and, you know, speaking of writing it down, organizing thoughts. I use something called Obsidian. Has anybody used that? It's really great mind mapping, and you can put a lot of extra 
uh, add-ons into it and have your own Kanban board. You can have Excaladraw, which I have a ton of drawings on there. They're absolutely horrible, but keeping everything in one place that can be easily pushed up to Git uh, is a great way to organize. And then it forced me to slow down and analyze, which that helped me with improved problem solving because slowing down, sometimes you gotta take a breath and you know, slow down a bit. So what I mean by clarifying the problem is I try to talk out the problem in a way that non-tech people can understand because not everybody who's watching would be, might be you know, a developer. Maybe they're interested in just development in general, trying to learn. Um, sometimes it involves drawing something out, like on, in Excalibur, or sometimes it's just talking through my thought process. But either way, it, it gives me a chance to clarify. And this goes along with it. By diagramming or listing out parts of the current task, I, I can organize my thoughts a lot more clearly, and that helps me out a lot. I forgot how high I made him jump. <laughs> Sorry. I did have sounds, but I forgot to add them in here, so <laughs> uh, you're, you're probably welcome for not that. So I mentioned this one was biggest. How many, think, how many of you think faster than you can type or forget what you were going to do before you have a chance to do it? Yeah, just about everybody. It's like, oh, I've got this great idea. I walk into the next room, threshold, and where am I? Um, by talking it through and actually taking the time to verbalize, I have a better chance to actually figure out what the hell I'm doing. Um, because, you know, slowing down. I'm reiterating it not only to, to people who are, might be watching, or, but, but to myself. And by these things combined, I am improving the problem solving. All right, let's not talk about me for a second, but don't worry, we'll get back to me soon enough. Another huge part of, of streaming, talking to myself, is building a community. And not just developers, but people who want to learn about development. I said that before. And even people who just want to support you because they, they like you. I started off streaming with zero community, and I have more than tripled that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think about the math too long. Uh, actually, I, I've grown not not a huge community, but you know a, a lot of people who will show up to every stream that I do. A lot of people that I will go to theirs, they will help me out. And um, recently, I don't know if I mentioned this in another slide or not. Um, I, I became a pretty big part, well not a big part, but very active in another open source community, the Godot game engine community. Yeah, I think I'll talk about that a little bit later. So, so getting a little bit real here, um, streaming and talking to myself has helped me through some hard times. Uh, October of last year, I was laid off, and then in April of this year, I was fired. Um, and I lost my job, I didn't have anything lined up, and the last time I didn't have any severance or insurance or anything, I learned really fast how many peanut butter and jelly sandwiches I could eat before getting sick of peanut butter and jelly. Uh, there were two ways that it could have gone. Could have let it push me into a deep, dark depression, which was most likely, but I decided that I could use my newly found free time to learn new things, especially now that I had a community in place to help support me. So it, it helped me out, and it got me interested in doing new things. Between my thousand resumes a day that it felt like I was sending out, um, you know, streaming, learning something different every day, trying new things, including this. This came from this presentation originally came from me being laid off and wanting to try something. Another benefit is well, I misspelled something on my notes here. Um, is actually learning new things, not just saying, hey, I want to learn this, actually doing it. Because I don't know if any of you are like me in this, but I'd often say, hey, this looks cool, I'd like to learn it, and then just go off to something and never come back to it and just think, man, someday I'm going to learn it. Uh, does anybody else do that? <laughs> okay, good. When, when I'm talking to myself, when I'm streaming, when I'm doing that, I, there's accountability because you know, when there are people there and I say, I'm going to build this thing or we're going to learn how to do this thing, um, I'm putting it out there and people will hold, hold you accountable. They'll say, didn't you say you're going to work on this? Didn't you say you're going to try to do this? Uh, yeah, but I'm playing a game instead. 
Well, no. Get back to uh, that thing that you said that you're going to do. So, what have I learned just from, from streaming and having different reasons to learn things? Um, I've done some game dev with Godot. I, I did some node stuff for some stream interactions and chatbot stuff. TypeScript for uh, a chatbot that I built. Unity because I wanted to punish myself. <laughs> C Sharp uh, for, for some stream effects, for some game dev stuff uh, when I was dipping my toes into Unity. Uh, but that's a whole thing. And then Python because I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I also did some uh, stuff in OBS. Does anybody not know what OBS is? It's uh, open broadcast software. Um, it's open source. It's kind of the standard for anybody who wants to stream anything anywhere uh, uses it. And I can show it off a little bit later. We did some React stuff for, for stream effects. I've learned how to do 3D modeling. Not great, but I can do it. And a sprite for pixel art, which is what I made this little dude in. Yeah. Not all of it. Um, a lot of these assets, well, all the tiles are made by somebody named Kenny, who is uh, pixel art Jesus and <laughs> the the greatest game asset person that I can think of because he gives everything away except a couple apps that he's made but any assets are CC0 where if you want to make a game you go to Kenny.nl and he has everything listed out that you can use for for any kind of artwork but for for my little dude here yeah um he was a sprite I've done a couple other pixel art things but I highly recommend it there's also a uh, I can't think of the name of it, but I was showing it off a couple weeks ago that is made in a game engine, but it's another pixel art system made in Godot, which is what I primarily make games in. Did that cover the question? Okay. <laughs> so that was a short level. Now let's talk about how my accountability and productivity has improved because I talk to myself. Well, like I said before, it helped me become accountable. It's kind of a psychological thing for me, especially. Um, when you tell others you're going to do something, you're going to do it, or more likely to be, uh, more likely to do it. There have been studies, but I was too lazy to look them up. Just trust me on this. And somehow I find myself more productive when, when I'm coding in public, when I'm learning in public, when I'm talking to myself, and... I'm just as surprised as you about it. Uh, I think it goes back to taking the time to slow down instead of just throwing spaghetti in the IDE and seeing what sticks. Uh, yes, I write fewer lines of code or put out fewer things, but what I do put out is higher quality and less buggy that I have to go back because I'm, I'm slowing down and I'm thinking about it. There's also the audience effect. Knowing, or thinking as the case often is, uh, that someone is watching makes me want to do better. Uh, I'm more careful with what I say, how I write code, how many energy drinks I chug, how many F-bombs I drop. I, I'm not really more careful about it. Oh, there's a bug. And, you know, I've said this over and over again. Um, but it's given me an excuse to learn new things. And it's because people who know the things will, will be helpful, call out mistakes, offer help. And nobody's been a real jerk, for the most part. Uh, people who do start being jerks get the band hammer and just somebody to take care of them. Um, but the other side of that is people are more likely to, to cause scope creep. Does anybody not know scope creep? <laughs> OK. Um, there'll be a lot of, hey, you know it would be cool if you did this. Like, you know it would be cool if you did this. And the next thing you know, they're like, can you make GTA 5 but, but on your own? Like, no, no, I, I just want to do a little box that jumps around. All right, but can we do Minecraft? No. 
And it's, it's a loop. There's a lot of continuous learning. Um, I've met a lot of people who are a lot smarter than me. I know that that doesn't really narrow it down, but I've met a lot of people who are a lot smarter than me. Devs who have worked on games that I, I played, um, and uh, people who have built tools that I use, and they're always willing to help when they can. Uh, does anybody know the game Where's My Water? I, I, I've talked to the guy who designed that, and I, I you know, hung out in his stream, he's hung out in mine, and he's given me a lot of tips, and it's great. There's a, another game, Satisfactory, I've hung out with in, in the person who made that, or one of the people who made that. It was a big team, not just one person. Uh, but yeah, I've met a lot of people, and they're all extremely willing to help. One of the funniest interactions I had was I was trying to learn for game dev something called a finite state machine to just give my uh, character in a game like if if this is happening then we you know switch to this code if this is happening we switch over to this code and I was watching a tutorial talking through it and then noticed somebody was chatting and I looked the person who was chatting is the person who made the tutorial I was watching and he was <laughs> helping me walk through the steps like you know it took me a while to realize it until he said you know, I, I can give you the link to the repo that I used to make this. <laughs> like, oh, holy shit. Okay, well then, um, I guess you do know what you're talking about. Um, I was even fortunate enough uh, a couple weeks ago to be invited to do a stream takeover for Godot Engine, where I, I was the Godot Engine stream for three hours one day. Uh, they do that weekly, or monthly, they have a takeover week. But just being there and then all the people who came in and gave all kinds of ideas and a lot of feedback. It was a lot of fun. All right. Is this, is anybody interested in trying it for themselves if, or, or learning how the sausage is made? I think that would be a better, better question. Um, it's simple to get started. It doesn't take much. You, you download OBS. I recommend it. It's free. It's powerful. Um, it's free. And it's open source. Uh, there are alternatives like Slobs or Streamlabs OBS, but that really locks you in. Uh, and there are a lot of really good plugins uh, for OBS to do different kinds of effects and really fun stuff. Uh, you set up some steams, scenes in OBS of you know, your camera if you want, just your, your workstation or your, your screen with your IDE, however you want to do it. Um, you press start and you just start talking to yourself. Well, sorry, I skipped over create an account. Uh, Twitch is getting better for developers. YouTube has not great live discovery. Um, either one, I mean, no matter what, you're probably, if you start off, you're, you're not going to have a huge audience, if any at all. But it's, for me, when I started, it wasn't about, you know, I'm going to stream to 15,000 people. It was, I'm going to hold myself accountable. Uh, another nice bonus is that all my videos are recorded so I can go back and you know critique myself a little bit and see okay how did I do this previously if it's something else that I'm going to work on or you know oh I really sound like an idiot there maybe I shouldn't say that a uh, question that comes up a lot is don't I need an expensive mic or camera or computer or chair or hat or anything. Um, no. The the best one you can use is the one that you have, especially if you're just getting started. I've seen people <laughs> spend like a thousand dollars on a Shure SMB microphone XLR mic and they hadn't even pressed start the first time. They hadn't even streamed. They're just like, I want this really expensive microphone because it's going to make me sound amazing and they don't know how to use it or, or set it up. Don't do that. <laughs> use your, your built-in stuff if that's all you have. Um, don't spend money unless you know that you're going to enjoy it. Say it again. Best equipment to start with is what you already have. Seriously. Don't buy new stuff. If you enjoy it, put some money into it. But wait to see, you see if you enjoy it. Don't buy new stuff. <laughs> Okay, this, this isn't really a bonus level, but where the heck is my button? There we go. 
it, it's more of a let's wrap it up and then get into the the demo part i know that things move kind of quick here but yeah if there are any questions now now's a good time i gave plenty of time for questions yeah do you schedule yourself i do um i have a schedule that i try to stick to um and did you post that i mean that's how somebody would know yeah uh you actually let's see if i can controller getting in my way So right now I got vacation mode, but if I, I have it posted under my JD Vins Dev schedule, and yeah, I do about six, seven days a week. Uh, I usually take Fridays off. It depends on, I, I play saxophone in a community band and a professional ensemble, just depending on the season. Uh, so like in the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be taking Thursdays off for band, but I usually do it after work, after I finish up and then on weekends and then i'll just you know if i don't feel like it i'll hop on my discord and say hey i'm not feeling great but most of the time my schedule i do at least three hours and it, it gives me that reason to to not just you know sink into uh overwatch or whatever game i've been messing with do you get paid <laughs> very little it's depressing to look at if you <laughs> if you uh try to figure it out what you get paid hourly but yes uh, there are different ways once you reach at least on twitch YouTube it's it's borderline impossible to, to get monetized but on twitch once you reach an average of three viewers uh, per per hour or I, I think that's what they use and a total of 50 followers which isn't that difficult to get to um, but when you hit that then you start earning ad revenue you can start charging or start, uh, people can start subscribing to you, which you see a portion of that. Um, sometimes people will help by going to like Streamlabs and dropping a tip or subscribing on Ko-fi or Patreon. Uh, actually, <laughs> um, funny story is I'm here because of my community today. Uh, you know, like I said, I was fired. I didn't have a lot of money. I said that, hey, you know, my talk is coming up. I'm probably going to have to cancel. Next thing I know, I'm getting a message that somebody in my community sponsored me to come up here. They wanted to remain anonymous. Otherwise, their name would be in big, bright letters right there saying, thank you, thank you. But they're very uh, specific that they wanted to be anonymous and went through one of the organizers here. Uh, but yeah, uh, and, you know, transparently, I, I streamed probably 20 to 30 days, or not 20 to 30, 20 to 25 days last month. And I, I, I'm I getting paid tomorrow $200. I mean, it's, it's not nothing, but I, I'm never gonna be able to quit my day job to do this unless something really, really, really weird happens. And with that being said, I am still, I think, with, with that, that pittance, I'm still within the top 1% of earners on Twitch <laughs> because there are several million people who stream. Um, a lot of people never reach that affiliate status or they, they just stop. Uh, and don't do it for money, do it because it's something that you want to do. Any other questions about anything that you've seen? Otherwise, I can attempt to show a little OBS if you want. I we've got plenty of time. What happens if your character dies in the presentation? <laughs> Nothing. I, I I have it in God mode, so uh, <laughs> so just to show, I, I wrote the game in Godot. Tiles are all but done by Kenny. Um, the character sprite, that's me. Even has a little idle. I like the idle thing. And level design, for better or worse, was me. And I did use a... Hmm? I'm just really curious. I want to see what happens if you die.
I've got a world boundary. <laughs> it, it took me an embarrassing long time to notice that your little guy's got a Drupalcon. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me just see it. See if I can do this really quick. Is it? So I think I can, I, I can, is that the wrong one? <laughs> yeah, so I, I have him invincible, so. <laughs> so any other questions or? So I've always been big on sharing knowledge and then, you know, just talking because I talk a lot and <laughs> uh, having an outlet to do it where I didn't feel like I was going more insane than I already was uh, helped out. So the main motivation was just that I had wanted to do it for a while and I watched a few people, got some help beforehand and then, like, you know, and my first stream was laughable. Uh, like I thought that I was going to go in and have like an entire like every day have a new Drupal presentation or something, uh, PowerPoints just sitting. And so today we're talking about, and there was nobody there. So I think, you know what, why, why do it like this? I'm just going to do it for myself and have fun. And I ended up doing quite a bit of stuff and, and learning a lot. I, I'm glad that I went that route, doing it for me rather than trying to appease anybody else because I have a lot more fun doing it this way. Yeah. Uh, I think I saw like a, a splash of your day with what you do on vacation or something like that. Do so you just focus on dev or is it kind of whatever you want to do? Uh, normally it's dev. Uh, normally game dev. Normally with Godot. Occasionally I'll do some 3D modeling in Blender. Like I've got. Here, let me. Like this is my primary game that I'm working on. Um, feel free to wish list, please. Uh, called Sooty's Revenge, and this is what I work on most days. Is is Sooty's Revenge. What's your handle? JD does dev. It is my uh, my username on Twitch. But this game is was inspired by a really frightening. Um, Smokey Bear ad from like the 1970s. <laughs> so this is about a bear who uh, really hates forest fires and will murder you if you start one. But guess what? You have to start one to find your way around. So, um, yeah, the, the the ad. Let me so I don't pull up the wrong thing here. Let me switch screens. Any other questions while, while we're doing I know I also said that we could look at OBS if anybody wanted to, to kind of see. I'll, I'll just throw a little comment. I, I know that one of, I wasn't here for the first part of your presentation, but I, I, I know what you're talking about with the kind of just like slowing down and talking a bit. I remember, yeah, when working at an agency a while back, uh, some of my teammates would just start asking me a question, and halfway through asking the question, they're like, well, wait, I figured it out. You know, so it's yeah. just that slowing down and saying, I got a problem, and like, I d and once they just started explaining it, they were all also like, "Oh wait, I know how to fix it now." Yeah, <laughs> so. it, it, 
That's, uh, you know, I mentioned the body doubling earlier. That helps a lot. Um, rubber ducking, cardboard developer, you know, just having somebody. I mean, before, I was talking to a rubber duck on my desk. Now I'm talking to a camera. <laughs> right. So I've got, I don't stream from this laptop um, because I do a lot of resource intensive stuff. But let's see if I can, well, that'll probably hurt. Blah, 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 blah. So I've got a lot of stuff here. This is an older version, but OBS is basically, you can record screen record with it you can voice record it's a, it's a full studio uh, where you can choose different scenes have them set up different ways I can't really see it that well here but like I mean that little animation there I made in blender yes I did 2d animation in a 3d thing um, and a lot of things that you could have is like browser sources. So if you, that's what I have my, I, my chat block in is a React app that's hooked into the Twitch API that gets the messages as they're created and then they all become components in the front end and it just you know, scrolls down. Uh, so that's one of the things I used to learn. Uh, and then you know, I have this that plays when I'm on ad breaks or starting up that's just a collection of clips. And I don't always use the cleanest language, so it's a good thing I got it turned down. <laughs> but to, to get it set up, I mean you set up a, a camera scene, a, a screen uh, that just gets your, your screen or whatever you want to share. Um, and then you press, you know, either start streaming, start recording, and then when you're done, you edit it. There, there's a lot more to it than just that, but to get started, I mean, it's this button starts everything. Still not dead. <laughs> Any other questions? Any? Yeah. Can you talk about Godot? I could talk a lot about Godot. Yeah. <laughs> but you're going to be waiting for Godot for a while. <laughs> it's actually named after that play uh, because it's a very lightweight game engine to build with compared to like Unity, Unreal, or anything like that. And part of that is that they don't put a lot of extra stuff in. Uh, so you're going to be waiting for the next new feature, the next thing, and that's why it got the name Godot. Um, but let me just make life a little bit easier here. Godot itself is written in Godot. Um, how the heck do I mirror screen here instead? And I don't know if that's going to kill my thing. There we go. All right, there we go. Now we can see. So Godot itself is um, a game engine. The the whole thing is under 200 megabytes on uh, to, to begin with and let me see I can't really make the the font or anything larger up there let me stop the game here um, but one of the reasons it's completely open source they're, they're never going to charge you for using it they're never going to charge you for for uh, uploading something to steam or itch they're not going to like unity last year around this time they really shit the bed and said we're going to start charging for every download above a certain amount 
And that was about the time when I was looking at getting into game dev. And so I thought, you know what? Why even bother with that when, when Godot is a thing? Um, but the things that really attracted me to it, oh, hey. Was, um, let's see, am I saying it? There we go. The asset library. I mean, does this look familiar? Maybe the, the Drupal modules? Uh, anybody can contribute different things to, to build, make games easier. And I did a tutorial on how to make a 3D first person shooter in under 10 minutes just using three add ons that were here. And I had a full 3D map. I had uh, rocks and trees scattered all over, and I had a first-person controller all set up just just by downloading a couple of the demos here. Um, did you have any specific questions about Godot? No, I, I knew so little about. Well, I knew absolutely nothing about it. I had never heard of it before, so I wasn't even sure if it was a language, an IDE, or you know, what it's it's a little bit of everything. Um, so you can use C sharp if you know C sharp. Um, within Godot and it'll render. The downside is you can't do a web build with C Sharp yet. Uh, .NET is going to make some updates to C Sharp in like six or seven months and then Godot can catch up and you can start doing web builds with C Sharp. But Godot itself has um, its own language which looks a lot and feels a lot like Python. Let me see, the presenter is probably the best place to see. It's called GD script and this I can where I, it uses the same kind of syntax as Python. Uh, it's, it's based on Python and Lua combined a little bit. Um, but if you don't want to learn C sharp, if you're coming from web dev like, like me, a language like this is really easy to dive into and Using the build, or using GD script instead of C sharp, you get advantages of um, you don't have to worry about multi-threading; it's already handled, and garbage collection is already handled. Where if you're writing it in C sharp, you got to make sure that you put in your own garbage collection that you're using the right threads there. It's really powerful. Some of the the games, um, Brotato is the first one that comes to mind. It was built in Godot. Uh, where you play a little potato and shoot things. It's kind of like Vampire Survivors. Um, Cassette Beast was done in Godot. And then I go back to here. There's also a lot of demo projects that you can just spin up and see how things go. Like if they're like tower defense game template. I mentioned Kenny before. Kenny has starter kits here. Uh, and they're all CC0. I could, you know, theoretically, all right, take Kenny's starter kit here, change a couple colors and sell it. I wouldn't do that because that's a real jerk move. Um, but I could. In fact, there was something recently. Unity has their own uh, asset store, like paid asset store where you have to go through Unity and buy things there. Somebody took Kenny's fonts or UI icons or something, didn't change them at all, uploaded it to the Unity store and started, tried to sell them. And then Kenny didn't do anything because it's CC0, so you can't like be like, well, you shouldn't do this, I'm gonna sue you because it's uh, Creative Commons, zero attribution, nothing, do whatever you want with it. Just put out a, a tweet, like, you know, this is a really good pack. And if you don't want to pay $9.99 for it, here's where you could go and get it for free. <laughs> All right, let me see. Just to show a couple of things. I mean, there, there are 13 pages of free things here, including audio. All of these are free to use um, for whatever. Any other questions before? All right, well, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. I'll press the button.